Welcome to Let's Talk Love. This is a new channel that we've started to have a conversation among ourselves, identifying some of the challenges that affect marriages, families, and even the nation. Things that may stand between two people who love each other, who have decided to marry, but perhaps they overlooked the differences between them. And now, when the rubber meets the road, they can't handle the challenges of an interracial marriage, an interreligious marriage, a marriage with challenges that are many. Today, we look at barrenness. From the Bible and from other books of history and from our personal experiences, we know that when a family does not get children, it is painful. The story of five barren women in the Bible is a case in mind. The story of Rachel, the story of Sarah. Today, I want to introduce this topic and say that, yes, two people who love each other can continue in the marriage even without children. There are various interventions, medical, and when those fail, it is possible to do a number of things, including adopting children, surrogate motherhood, and so on and so forth. The defining thing is love, wherever there's love, however high the challenge may be, you can bring it down. Today, I'll talk about two stories. One is from a man who endured a marriage of 13 years without a child, and when they finally got the children, the wife passed on eight days after the second child. Is a moving story which is coming to you soon. As told by the person himself. The other story is about a lady who I have known for many years. She has a compelling story which she has asked me to tell because she cannot tell it herself, but of course also she's a very old woman today. The story of Joan is a moving story. I first met Joan many years ago when friends of mine and I had gone to a local pub to have a drink. Joan came to serve us and she was different from the normal barmaid. She looked quite different. She was, first of all, strikingly beautiful with a figure that any woman would admire to have. Her language was different from the language of barmaids. In the short time I got to know her, before I got her story, I kept wondering, why would somebody like this be in a bar? Not that people who sell in bars are not people, but some of them look quite out of place. They look like that's not where they belong. Joan was one such a person. I then got to hear her story. After, meet, after meeting her many times. I got to understand she was in a bar because she left her marriage. In circumstances that can make somebody shed tears. She was married happily to a man from another community. And her beautiful young sister would visit them as she was going to school nearby. So before going to school, she would pass there, stay a day or two, then report to school. 
During half time or so called mid time, instead of traveling home, she would live with them. The sad bit is that Joan was barren. She had been married for a number of years, she did not have a child. What followed is really sad. She then got to discover that her sister, who was in Form 3 then, was in the family way. Mabel, the sister Joan, was pregnant. And Joan's husband was responsible. This is quite many years ago. And therefore, society was fairly very traditional. It was something not heard of from our community. She comes from my community. She went home, back home in tears. And it was very painful for the mother. At the time of meeting Joanne, she had stayed for a number of years since leaving her home. And for a number of years to follow, Mabel never came home. Nobody from home went to see her. She raised a family of children. It was so long because by the time the family got to deal with it, because Joan sat with the mother, told the mother, Mom, I can see you are old. You cannot leave us in this world before I resolve the problem with my sister. I've gotten to a point after these many years where I want to forgive my sister for what she did. I want her to invite our sister home and we shall do whatever culture and tradition and custom demands, but I want to be able to forgive my sister. It's been a long time now. So that happened, and Mabel for the first time, with children in secondary school. So this cannot be two years, they cannot be ten years. She now had kids in secondary school. I remember very well. So Mabel was welcome home, Prayers were conducted, and whatever his custom requires was done. But this is not all I got to learn about Joan. Barrenness, indeed, is, us, is something serious. I had heard a story from a distant relative of mine who was then my neighbor in Kakameka. And he had told me the story of having a wife who doesn't give birth. He had told me it was a very, very painful experience. He had told me he lived with a beautiful girl, beautiful woman, for a number of years without a child. He said something I've never forgotten. This distant uncle of mine told me, the home, everybody will be happy, he will be happy, everybody will be nice, until the day the month visits the woman. When that happens, it reminds the woman that she is barren. And the sadness that engulfs the house when the woman is in those days of us is something you may not wish to go through. The story of Joan is intertwined with this story. I let her go to know that actually the Joan I met had been married to a distant uncle of mine that after her sister had displaced her, after she had gone through the shock and the agony and she began to live a normal life, she had tried to remarry again. 
The person who she remarried now is the same, same person who was narrating to me what he had gone through with a woman who had been buried. buried. So when many years again later, I met these two together, I was able to chat and talk about it with them. This channel is about enduring love. This channel is about telling people that whatever circumstances you are in, however monumental and big the challenge you have, there are people who have gone through worse situations. The story of John is very painful because in those two instances, I got to know to get somebody I know, people I know, having gone through the challenges of barrenness and whatever it brings to them. You can imagine that you are married to somebody and they marry your sister because you don't have children. And that's not part of your culture. There are cultures where people marry sisters. That was not part of their culture. This channel has been put together for people to share their experiences, to help those going through similar situations. Sometimes just to know that you are not alone. Sometimes to know that people have gone through these things, some of them successfully. Sometimes, like recently when I was asking Joan to come and do this story, to know that there is nothing big enough that time cannot heal. That with the love of her sister, Joan was able to forgive Mabel. If it wasn't for the love of her sister, it was not going to be possible. She'd been betrayed, mistreated. The unthinkable had happened to her. But because the love of her sister must be strong, she was able to forgive the sister. We have a testimony coming up from a man, like I've said, who went through what very few people would go through and come out alive and strong and enduring. Keep tuned to Let's Talk Love Kenya. Subscribe if you haven't. doesn't cost you anything. Encourage friends, relatives, and anybody else you know to subscribe to this channel because we are going to have conversations. And if you know of a person who has a moving testimony, of a person whose life story can help us to help somebody who is going through similar challenges, please do not hesitate to introduce them to us so that they can tell their story. That story may be the beginning of healing for somebody else or for a couple. Thank you and please do subscribe. Children.